welcome to The Culture Bar, an arts and culture podcast series brought to you by Harrison Parrott. In this episode of our Speed Podcast mini-series, we talk to Millie Payne, publishing manager of Birdsong, the music publishing arm of Harrison Parrott, to find out more about and demystify the world of music publishing. Thank you for joining us today, Millie. Thank you very much for having me. This is really exciting. Perfect. Thank you for being here. Seeing as this is a Speed Podcast, we will jump right into the nitty-gritty So Millie, please tell us, what is music publishing? Well, in the nature of it being a speed podcast, I'm going to summarise music publishing uh, somehow in in one sentence. So publishing is best described as anything you can legitimately do with the copyright in a composed piece of music in order to make money for the benefit of its composer, while stopping other people from doing the same illegitimately. Oh my goodness, that sounds very legal, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's a lot of that, yes. (laughs) So, um, Millie, what does a music publisher actually do within music publishing? Yeah, so I think a lot of people, um, particularly those who don't work in the music industry, think music publishing is simply um, creating books and selling them. Uh, Maybe that's a bit simplistic, but I I, I get that a lot. Um, And while, of course, that is one element of publishing, um, it's a lot more than that. Uh, we look for ways to exploit copyright um, in composers' music, and by exploit, I, I use that in a positive <laughs> sense, uh, to ensure it's being played and ultimately making money. Um, a music publishing company can offer multiple services for composers and songwriters, um, from a basic administrative deal to a much broader service that will also involve exploitation, career guidance, and creative assistance. Publishers will take a percentage of royalties or fees from the composer, and that percentage will vary considerably depending on what the agreement offers. So it's much more than just looking after the music. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) It's the people too. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So it's almost sort of like a little bit of artist management mixed in there to a certain extent. Yeah, I guess to an extent, yeah. Yeah. Um, And can you talk to us a little bit more about the creative side of publishing? Sure, yes. So the creative side of music publishing um, involves a variety of of things, um, including our pitching works and the composers themselves to potential performers and promoters, um, and also to film and TV production companies, music supervisors, ad agencies, trailer houses, um, to kind of ensure that you know they're getting work and, and their, their back catalogue is being exploited. Um, we help composers to develop their career by providing advice and guidance and to re- promote their reputation. Um, for example, a composer might only be known in quite a niche area, um, but is keen to expand their reputation. Um, so, I mean, for example, they, they may be known as a choral composer um, only in Scotland, and they, they may want help being introduced to the rest of the UK and internationally, um, or they may have an array of orchestral scores sat in a drawer, but they're too nervous to showcase it. Um, so we're kind of there to, to help them with that and broaden their reputation. A lot of publishers, of course, help with the creation of sheet music, as I I mentioned before, um, which can include editorial services, um, and in the case of orchestral and ensemble works, um, manufacturing sets of performance materials, um, which are then generally made available on hire. A lot of publishers, I mean, you know, not so much birdsong, but a lot of publishers create educational materials. Um, Many classical publishers have a team dedicated to producing materials for schools and instrumental teaching. Um, and something that um, you know, Birdsong is, is, is really keen to, to work on is um, seeking commissions and new opportunities for composers. And you can also work creatively on bespoke music for projects such as ads and trailers. Um, the list is endless, really. Gosh, that's really broad. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're kind of trying to um, find new opportunities for composers, would that be literally you going out and finding orchestras or finding venues or finding, I don't know, like... Um, a brand or something that needs music for is it literally anything and everything yeah exactly like um you know we'll be out talking to um performers and and orchestras and you know showcasing our composers to them um so how do composers um make money from their work um so there are loads of ways composers can make money um anytime a piece is performed in public the writer or publisher and publisher is owed money um this can be in the most obvious place like a live venue but also it doesn't have to be a live performance. So it can be pubs, clubs, hotels, shops, Spotify, radio, planes, anywhere really. Planes? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the performing right is generally licensed by the performing right organisation. So there'll be a um, you know, royalty generated from each oh, performance. Um, composers can make money by reproducing their composition. Um, so this used to be um, in the kind of obvious way, like via vinyl and, and CD. But nowadays recordings are made and distributed digitally. Um, so to give you an example, when a piece of music is played on Spotify, 
um, both performance and mechanical rights um, that I've just mentioned are at play and the division between the two rights varies according to which society is doing the licensing. Um, the society I mentioned is, is the performing right organisation which in the UK is PRS um, and the mechanical right organisation which in the UK is the MCPS. Composers and songwriters can make money through sync income. Um, sync refers to when music is synchronised with visual media. Um, for example, when music is played on an ad or on TV, a publisher will issue a sync licence. Um, these can be quite substantial, but sync deals are relatively difficult to secure. Mm. I, I never knew that that was what that was called. You yeah. know, when the music is synced to anything that's yeah. visual, like an advert or something yeah. like that, I had no idea there was yeah. actually a name for that. Yeah. Um, I just thought it was, oh, it's just music in an advert, yeah. you know, or a jingle. I know that sounds yeah. terrible, but, you know, a jingle or something. But actually, yeah, that makes a lot more sense that it is, it's, it is a whole separate part of the whole, of the whole package, really, of music publishing, isn't it? That it's this whole area on its own. And mm. like you said, it must be really hard to yeah. get those kind of deals in place because they must be quite lucrative as well yeah yeah i mean um i think you know the most famous examples are i now the being synced on every car ad <laughs> 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 just you know the last couple of um uh, ways that composers can make money are grand rights and higher so grand rights refer refers to music that is performed in a dramatic context on a stage for example opera musicals ballet etc um, and higher is hiring out scores to both amateur and professional performers Oh, fantastic. Um, so you have mentioned birdsong a couple of times already, and it will be great for you to tell us a bit more about birdsong and how it's different to maybe some other publishing houses. Sure. Um, so birdsong music publishing is the new publishing arm of Harrison Parrot, um, and it's in a unique position because of its close relationship to Harrison Parrot, who have a global network of artists and commissioning partners who can assure a composer's music is being performed. Um, and... Uh, through our connections, we can offer a bespoke service tailored to the composer's needs. Um, we, careful, sorry, we carefully listen to and consult with the composer to determine where they need the most assistance and ensure that they are receiving the assistance and guidance that they need. And we're fortunate that we can offer management as well. Mm, yeah, whole complete package. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and can you tell us a bit about the composers we have signed already at Birdsong? We've signed uh, Jimmy Lopez, who's a Peruvian composer based in um, LA at the moment. He's just finished his um, piano concerto, which is being performed by the London Philharmonic Orchestra in February, which is really, really, really exciting. I've had a little sneak peek already, and it's, it's brilliant. Um, he's written some really amazing things. He's a very sort of maximalist composer. Um, we have uh, Charlotte Bray. Um, who's uh, she's brilliant she's really brilliant she recently um had the the world premiere of her um song cycle crossing fault lines um at the oxford leader festival um which was a song cycle um commissioned specifically for this um uh, festival about uh, women's experiences in the workplace um i was absolutely blown away by the song cycle it was brilliant Finally, um, to wrap up our Speed podcast, Millie, please can you tell us where listeners can go to find out more about Birdsong and music publishing? Yes, of course. Uh, so to find out more about Birdsong, you can go to our website, www.harrisonparrot.com forward slash Birdsong. Um, and to find out more about music publishing, uh, the Music Publishers Association offers some brilliant training courses um, for complete novices and also intermediate courses and specialist courses. Um, I've been to many myself and they're really great. Um, and the Musicians' Union website often has helpful articles for anyone interested in a career in music publishing. Perfect. Thank you very much, Millie, for giving us your insights into music publishing. Thank you very much for having me.